All right, everybody, this is Ross. Um, I have a really interesting and very special treat for myself today in this video. And I really wanna share this with you guys because it's, it's one of my favorite fruits. It's not only one of my favorite fruits, it is my favorite thus far, it is my favorite berry. And I've tried a lot of fruits, the rare, interesting, weird stuff that most people don't know about that you can grow here in this climate. This was one of those weird and interesting things. It's called a Marion berry. And it's a cross basically between a raspberry and a blackberry. It's kind of the simplest way to put it. It's a little bit more detailed than that, but it combines, in my opinion, some of the best qualities of a raspberry and just puts them into a package that is a blackberry. So these blackberries here, essentially, you could, you could call them, look just like a blackberry. It's very, not much different at all to eating a blackberry. So the experience is very similar, but the flavor is extremely, extremely different. Um, it really does have an intense raspberry flavor. That's where that raspberry parentage comes in. And the raspberry flavor is so intense that it blows any other raspberry I've ever had out of the water. And in my opinion, the berry flavor is so strong and complex and interesting that it beats a lot of other fruits that I've grown and including I think any other berry. We decided, I decided this last year. We've been talking about it for a while. We finally got a taste of this thing. And I've just been really, really impressed with it. So I hope this year after trying these that are in my hand here that we're gonna finally maybe put this to bed and really I could confidently say that this is my favorite berry. Um, I'm already in the process, by the way, of how much I like this. I'm already in the process of propagating it. I know blackberries and raspberries and a lot of these canes are very easily to uh, very easily propagated. You can just stick the tips right in the ground, and at the end of the season, dig that up and plant it wherever you want. Um, I decided actually this year to a different, do a different propagation method where I'm actually doing some uh, rooting of the cuttings. I'm taking some cuttings, dipping them in rooting hormone, and trying to root them. We'll see how that works out, but. My goal, at least with that, is to have many more plants because I do really enjoy this berry quite a bit. Um, you know, today is, I think, July 14th, but I would say, you know, I didn't get out here early enough and net the, uh, the berries. I didn't realize that the birds were gonna get them as early as they did, and I probably could have gotten them in early July. So maybe that's probably an, a better, probably a better estimate there. Uh, this is actually a, one berry right there that's that's almost ripe, has a little bit of red inside of it. That's kind of the trick, by the way, with harvesting not just these, but also blackberries in general, is that they turn that red and then they turn sort of like half red and half purple, as you can see that one right there. And then they go all the way to that purplish uh, black color. And if you still have any red inside, you can kind of... Um, you're kind of picking them a little too early. Oh, and one other thing before I put the camera back is that they have some sort of, looks like anthracnose or some kind of disease on the leaves. And um, never seen this before, at least last year, I don't remember seeing it, but it definitely looks like, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of leaves in this small area. Therefore, there's not great um, airflow and it's probably encouraging that disease, whatever that is. Again, I think it's anthracnose. I don't exactly know, maybe it's rust, but uh, hopefully that doesn't become a huge issue uh, for me in my yard. Maybe someone in the south, if you're trying to grow these, would kind of struggle with that. But, you know, I would still try it anyway. I don't, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal personally, but it's worth looking into. So let me try these now and see uh, if the hype that we had last year is still the same. Whoa. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm. Guys, I'm telling you, whoa, that is such a great flavor. It has like its own flavor too. It's not even necessarily a raspberry. It's kind of like an artificial grape flavor. If you took an artificial grape flavor, add it in a raspberry, had that explode in your mouth because that's kind of what blackberries do with all those individual little pockets of juice. It's so soft, it's very sweet, it's a little tart. 
Um, and the flavor is so complex and interesting that it's just mind-blowingly good. Yeah, I, I do actually, I do believe that is my favorite berry for flavor. Um, wow, that's so good. And, you know, what else is up there, by the way, is the Gumi. There are some blueberries I grow that are, I think, really good as well. Uh, the honeyberry, I would argue, is up there as well. And so is the black raspberry. Those are my more favorite types of fruits, types of berries, because those are more, usually a bit more complex, maybe other than the gumi. Maybe not complex, is the, I'm sorry, that's the wrong word. It has a really intense berry flavor to it. The gumi is more mild and more fruity in its berry flavor. Not that it doesn't have a good berry flavor, but that's usually what I go for, is something a bit more intense, a little bit more uh, complex, not just simple sweet, like a raspberry, not just simple sweet like maybe some of the blueberries I've had and they're just a little tart. Um, you know, gooseberries you could kind of make an argument are a little simple sweet or something like that and they have a little bit of tartness. I enjoy them though. You know, the currant you could make an argument as well that, well Ross, you, sh you would love the black currant, but for me the black currant's just a little too out there. I, I do enjoy the Josta berry. That's a little bit more along the lines of what I think um, this is and what some of those other fruits I mentioned are. This one for me though, I think what really brings it home compared to those other fruits is that it is sweet and it has the most amazing berry flavor and it is quite, uh, quite tart. So it's got different layers and it's not just like a honey berry that's um, very complex in your face, awesome berry flavor and then it's just not very sweet. Same thing with the current, it's just not very sweet. You know, um, that's why I like the Gumi so much. It has everything kind of in one. It even has some astringency, which I think gives it a nice little bonus ahead of other fruits too. Um, but for my money, that's, that really is my favorite berry. I, I do think you guys should grow it. Uh, I don't care where you live, just try it. I don't know where it would do well. I know it's uh, a big thing in the Pacific Northwest, so obviously it'll do well there. I have two, two plants right here that are getting quite big and they'll fruit on um, these canes now that I've kind of let them sprawl out. I'm gonna very soon cut off the tips and they're gonna start branching out as uh, this, this plant over here already started, has started doing. And then of course it's gonna, you know, put on a bigger crop next year because of that because the, the Marionberry will not fruit on um, the Primacanes. So you have to wait until next year to get more fruits on last year's canes. That's a, one of the, I guess, the downside of it, as there are some blackberries that, you know, will fruit on those prima canes, uh, which is totally, it's just it's awesome. It's a really great thing. They'll fruit twice. So at least for me, that's my plan for now is to get them on the trellises, cut them off, let them branch out. And then in the, the uh, fall, when things start to go dormant, I actually have to take them off, off the trellis, put them on the ground, and then cover them with some straw or some kind of mulch to uh, get them through the wintertime. Believe it or not, here in zone 7A, they are right on the edge of dying or surviving. So it's really a good idea if you are growing these in a colder place like a 7A, that you do put them on the ground and insulate them to get them through the wintertime. And then when the spring comes back around, you plop them back up on the, on the trellis uh, unfortunate you have to kind of go through that, but if you're in a higher, uh, like a zone 7B, I think you're going to be fine. It's really right around 5 degrees that they start to, you know, take damage and, uh, and could potentially die. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's a nice little tip there, and that's kind of just what I go through here. Other than that, it's kind of very straightforward, like growing a, a blackberry or a raspberry. Um, and there's many ways to do it. You know, you don't have to do it just like this trellis here. You could also just kind of grow them in a, you know, a nice little way that a blackberry would and just have the canes kind of erect. Maybe uh, as this one here isn't that erect like some other blackberries are that I've grown. This one I would say is probably semi-erect or even trailing. Um, but you could, I guess, stake them up and then have individual plants in a row rather than kind of trellising them out on these on these wires excuse me so that's kind of the video here guys i hope that uh this is you know 
making some sense at least in how it's grown and I, I do really hope that a lot of people will start growing this because I've heard about it and then the more people who hear about it the more popular this becomes and the more people uh, I think get to inevitably enjoy this awesome fruit so we'll see you guys soon all right take care and uh, check out other videos we've done now on other fruits and the Marion Berry as well we'll see you soon all right take care